Hi everyone and welcome back to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on T-cell action, otherwise known as cell-mediated immunity. In the previous video I posted about immunity, I looked at phagocytosis and so we'll have a bit of a recap on that topic as the process of phagocytosis helps this specific immune system response take place. For the exam, you need to be able to explain the cell-mediated immune response and explain the roles played by helper T-cells. In addition to that, you need to understand that whilst phagocytosis is a non-specific response, the T-cell action or cell-mediated immunity is a specific response. So let's first talk about T-lymphocytes. They're made in the bone marrow, but they're called T-cells because they mature in the thymus gland. They actually carry out a specific immune response, as I've mentioned earlier, mainly because they can't recognize foreign antigens directly, but they only respond when they're presented on one of our own cells. They rely on these receptors on the surface of cells, which can detect antigens and bind to form antigen receptor complexes. I'll show you this shortly in a diagrammatical form. Out. This image here shows you the location of the thymus gland. It's actually located in our chest cavity just above the heart and slightly behind the lungs. So when we look at cell mediated immunity, we're primarily talking about the action of T cells. But before a T cell becomes activated, the process of phagocytosis needs to take place. In the process of phagocytosis, we see the engulfing of this antigen, or we can call them the pathogen, and the phagosome being formed. Once the pathogen has been destroyed or hydrolyzed, the macrophage presents the antigens on its own cell surface membrane, and this is when we call it the antigen presenting cell, or the APC. These antigens are recognized by helper T cells. The helper T cells will bind to the antigen and to the macrophage receptor, which leads to the activation of helper T cells. You can see the red box there highlighting the binding of the helper cell to the macrophage receptor. And you've also got the close up over there just on the left. The macrophage also produces and releases cytokines, which enhance T cell activation. The activated T cell then releases more cytokines, which causes the proliferation of other helper T cells and helps to activate cytotoxic or killer cells, as well as antibody producing B cells. So there are two different types of T cells that you need to know about. As you've listened to this video, you may have helped me mention both helper cells or the killer T cells or the cytotoxic T cells. They're the same thing. First of all, if we talk about the helper T cell, everywhere the macrophage travels, it presents an antigen to the T helper cells that it encounters. The T helper cells have a receptor in their membrane cleverly called the T cell receptor. This is a protein receptor with a specific shape. If the antigen on the macrophage matches with a T-cell receptor on the helper T-cell, it becomes an active T-cell. There are literally millions of different T-helper cells with different receptor shapes, and only when the macrophage finds the specific appropriate one will the process continue. That's why it actually takes some time before the immune system starts to respond to the infection, by which time you're already feeling unwell. Once the appropriate T helper cell is activated, it can now proceed to stimulate another T cell. Once they recognize the foreign antigens on the macrophages, they can then divide to produce a large colony of specific T cells by the process of mitosis. The name helper is appropriate because it helps to activate the B cells to secrete antibodies, and it also helps to activate killer T cells or the cytotoxic T cells to kill the infected target cells. The second type of T cell is the cytotoxic T cell, otherwise known as the killer T cell. These cells can also recognize the foreign antigens on the surface of infected cells, and they also have the ability to divide rapidly. The main job of these cells are to kill abnormal or infected cells. They do this by producing a protein called perforin, for example, that makes holes in the cell surface membrane. The holes make the cell membrane permeable to all substances, and the cell dies. So in terms of your exams, you could be asked to describe the process of cell-mediated immunity. Most questions relate to HIV questions and the effect of the virus on the T-cell counts, and so I'll cover that in a separate video.
That's all I have for you guys today. I hope that helps you understand the process of T-cell action or cell-mediated immunity just that little bit better than you did before. I will be posting on B-cell action very, very soon, so please look out for that also. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and are following me on Instagram to receive updates. And if you need any more help, please leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.